Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about chemotaxis. And we'll be talking about what is chemotaxis and why it is important. Now, chemotaxis is a process where a cell migrates towards a particular direction of chemical concentration. So, is there a particular chemical concentration? That chemical can be anything, different kind of chemical. But in response to the chemical gradient, when a cell migrates towards the, the direction, it can be a cell, it can be a unicellular organism or it can be a cell of a multicellular organism. But ultimately that cell will sense that chemical gradient and migrate towards that direction. And this movement according to the presence of a chemical molecule somewhere is termed as chemotaxis because this is the movement. Taxis means it is definitely related with movement based on the chemical gradient that is why chemotaxis. So in chemotaxis there are two things one is the chemical molecules let us say this is the chemical molecule it is a chemical gradient it can be a gradient or it can be some chemical molecule spread out there and there is an organism or a cell right. So I just write it as a cell here a cell it can be a unicellular organism or it can be the cell of a multicellular organism whatever. So that cell will go towards the direction of that chemical molecule because the cell is attracted to those chemical molecules right and this movement of cell based on the attraction for certain chemical molecules is termed as chemotaxis. Now in this case there are two types of chemotaxis possible. One is that the cell is attracted towards the chemical molecule, right. This kind of chemotaxis is called chemoattraction, right, chemoaddiction or chemoattraction. Now, in this chemoattraction, this is also called as positive kind of chemotaxis. But there is another kind of chemotaxis possible. Now, imagine the situation where there are certain chemical molecules, chemical signal or signaling molecules that are present out there are acting as a repellent for that cell. So again in this case there is a cell it can be unicellular or multicellular whatever. Now that cell due to the presence of those chemical factors want to go away from those chemicals. A cell is present in environment but as slowly certain chemical molecules start to surround that cell it kind of distract the cell and cells start to move away from that chemical molecule. This is called chemo repellent feature, chemo repellent or negative form of chemotaxis. This is chemo attractant. Or positive type of chemotaxis. So these are the two types of chemotaxis that are possible okay based on the attractivity either it will be attracted towards the chemical molecule or it is going against going away from that chemical molecule. In either way this is chemotaxis because definitely the movement of the cell is driven by the chemical molecule driven by the concentration of chemical molecule that is present outside that cell. Now there are examples for both this scenario, right? If we choose unicellular organisms like bacteria, in that case we know there are certain chemical molecules which attract that bacteria. That can be food source. Simple, a simple example for chemotactis is a food source. So if there is a food source that food is acting as a chemical molecule and that is attracting the cell, the bacteria to move towards the direction of the food to take that. And bacteria will go to take that food because it is necessary. On the other hand, if there is any kind of toxin that is present in the environment, in that case bacteria want to go away from that toxin. So it is a chemo repellent type of chemotaxis in case of toxin, right? They will go away from toxin, they will try to go away from to toxin. And that is the chemo repellent feature of it. Now generally this process of chemotaxis is widely observed in case of bacteria and it is necessary for setting up different infections in our body during the different stages of bacterial invasion. And also in eukaryotic cell this chemotactics feature is shown in earlier developmental stages as well as in immunological reactions. 
because you know in earlier developmental stages during the fertilization process in eukaryotes the sperm should meet with the egg they will fuse right and the nucleus is also fuse so in this case the sperm will swim towards the chemical gradient secreted by the egg cell that is a movement in case of eukaryotic chemotaxis that's the example of eukaryotic chemotaxis so the example for eukaryotic chemotaxis we can write the sperm movement during fertilization this is the example in eukaryotes similarly the example in eukaryotes also in a immune system a pathogen enters the body right in that case macrophage engulfs it or say natural killer cell break it down macrophage engulfs it and start releasing chemical molecules signaling molecules remember interleukins we call them chemokines right those molecules are acting as this chemotaxis molecules and those chemotactic molecules will attract other cells like t cells b cells to that infection place right that is the job and so we can see that also during the immune system in eukaryotes in case of us except for that this usual process of chemotaxis is observed for the basic purposes in unicellular organism like bacteria or protozoa many protozoa also use this process right chemotaxis to track down the food and and to also get away from the predator so the repellent action will be against the predator molecules right the toxic molecules and this attractant uh, feature will be towards the food particle okay so that's the process in case of prokaryotes now if we talk about why they called as a chemokines you know kine related with kinetic means the movement right and these are chemical molecules that helps in movement so that's why we call them chemokines so there are two types of molecules chemokinetic molecule and chemorepellent molecules chemokinetic molecules in case of unicellular acts as food particles right so concentration of particular sugar glucose or any sugar can act as that and also there are some chemical there are some let's say some amino acid sequences but modified kind but in case of the chemorepellent feature the example of chemorepellent molecules are certain kind of toxins lps for example then also there are uh, some amino acid sequences generally attractant molecules played by formyl amino acids okay so these are the examples of certain chemical molecules that are acting as chemotactic molecules now as we see that this process can be seen in case of unicellular as well as multicellular organisms but the way of activation is slightly different in case of prokaryotes now if we take an example like bacteria we know bacteria can move right it can kind of swim in the solution solution in the in different surrounding medium using the flagella right now bacteria can have flagella in different places it can have flagella in the pole or it can have flagella throughout the body whatever it is let's say let's imagine the bacteria that we are talking about here is having the flagella throughout the body let's say this now this bacteria should migrate towards the food concentration right so usually how the question there are two question first is how this bacteria sense that there is the food source second question how this bacteria move towards that direction the answer to the first question is the interaction between this chemical molecule and the cell is due to cell i mean ligand receptor binding ligand receptor binding and in this case the ligand is this chemical molecule so this chemical molecule is acting as a ligand or signaling signaling molecules in case of eukaryotes this is the ligand receptor however is present on the surface of bacterial cell here so now the chemical molecule once bound with this receptor it triggers the signal right it simply ligand receptor binding and most of this receptor that are found on the surface of cell they are multi transmembrane domain proteins so multi pass membrane proteins so once they receive that they will give some signal inside 
and the signal allows this cell to further move how the second question how the bacteria will move the answer to that question they will move using flagella we know that flagella is a rotatory motor that can rotate things so how can somebody just walk in within rotating things now usually the bacteria play present in the liquid environments so in the liquid environment rotating is kind of good thing to move forward you can't walk there just like that so in this case this signaling internally suggest this cell to assemble all of this flagella in a bundle it's a bundle like structure and it will tell the cell to rotate this flagella in counter clockwise direction remember this very carefully the counter clockwise rotation of flagella remember first thing is that all this flagella start to arrange in one direction only so all of this flagella start to arrange like this probably you have seen a picture like that so all of this flagella start to contain a bundle like structure only in one direction right and then they will move counter clockwise so as this flagella start to rotate counter clockwise it generates the movement towards this direction so let's say the food particles that we are talking about the chemical signaling molecules are shear so now the cell will migrate towards this food particles this is the way bacteria sense the environment and move forward now the second thing also can happen is that sometimes the bacteria generally don't want to move towards the food source it wants to balance its body it wants to stay sometimes in the floating condition in that case they will not arrange all the flagella in bundle instead what they will do once they reach the food source they need to be i mean stabilized with the food source so that they will not sink right so just stay at the place so at that time they rotate this flagella in clockwise direction so they rotate all this flagella in the clockwise direction so if they rotate this flagella in clockwise direction what happens actually is slowly so the, if they are rotating at this direction right so slowly they called what is called a tumbling tumbling movement so simply it's rotating in staying in one particular place so it helps the bacteria to stay in that particular place but still rotating the flagella it's very important it is simply balancing things by rotating the armory the flagella that is present right when it is in clockwise direction remember this tumbling movement is in clockwise direction but this straight forward movement is by counter clockwise direction okay this is not the video to talk detailed about the uh, flagellar movement and the bacterial chemotaxis but still i have discussed that on the other hand if you look at the eukaryotic cell eukaryotic cell should also migrate but eukaryotic cells sense the environment differently and also the migration strategy different because in eukaryotic cell flagella is not present in every cell in case of sperm movement flagella is playing a vital role in that case the flagella of sperm is different than the flagella of bacteria it's made with different proteins okay and 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 the uh, process is slightly different in all these cases they need energy to rotate the flagella in the form of atp but so the process is kind of same like the this flagella movement tumbling and all this but i am going to talk about what happens in case of normal cell unicellular organism let's say protozoa it wants to move amoeba wants to move toward, towards the food source it sends the environment how did it sends the environment amoeba is also protozoa so just exclude that but in case of eukaryotic cell if you take any eukaryotic cell let's say you take the example of a macrophage detecting uh, uh, infected cell out there so the macrophage will move towards the chemical agents chemokines examples interleukins right example histamine and all these molecules out there so what happens that cell that cell contains in case of immune system that immune cells they have inside you know we have cytoskeleton inside hard cytoskeleton 
made up with actin, microtubules and all these things. Now let's say these are the chemical molecules that are attracting the cells towards it, itself. Okay. And now they sense this environment by a gradient. They actually sense the gradient environment there using similarly using such certain molecules receptors attached outside. They also have certain receptors outside of the cell surface. They will detect this gradient, concentration gradient of that molecule. Let us say in this case this is a histamine. So there is a concentration gradient of the histamine. It is very low here but as it goes there it start to rise because the problem is actually going on here. So, once they start to sense this chemical environment, sense this gradient, similarly the signaling pathway inside eukaryotic cells start to turn on is the pathway, remember PI3 kinase pathway, PI3K pathway, PI3K pathway once it start turning on inside, start activating other molecules, they start ultimately activating those secondary messengers and all these different messengers inside in signal cascade and finally they activate the phosphorylase, the actin phosphorylase enzymes and those actin phosphorylase enzymes slowly start to phosphorylate actin and that makes this actin to grow and shrink in distal end. Distal end means if the actin begins this is the frontal and this is the distal end. Distal end means it is in contact with the cell membrane portions. So, as the actin start to grow from the distal end towards a particular area, how it will look like? It will look something like this. Cells slowly start to morph because it is moving. Then after that it will look something like this. And then finally it moves to a particular direction. Let us say it moves here. Then again it will sense the environment, again moves slowly. So, this actin phosphorylation slowly helps this cell to rearrange the directionality of cytoplasm movement and once it is moving the cytoplasm towards the direction, the cell is pushing itself, it is pushing itself forward and this way it start pushing itself towards the chemical gradient, towards that chemical and then it can move. So this is a process of chemotaxis presented by eukaryotic cells. Okay. So in a sense, this is chemotaxis both for prokaryotes as eukaryotes. Right? And I hope this video helps you to understand chemotaxis. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more important videos like this and share this video with your friends. Thank you.